وقف الطفل وحده والليالي ورصاص من حوله وجنوب وقف الطفل والحجارة أكوام وعيناه عزمة مصوب لا يرى عن يمينه من معين لا يرى عن شماله من يدو كل ساح سعى إلي خلاء كل درب يشق This is what terror looks like. 150 people crowded into a darkened basement. Look, look, she says. Look at what's happening to us. Inside, there's grief. And there's anger. Now we want you to help us. We want all of the body, all of the country, all of the العالم, the world, all of the world to help us. مثل ما أنتوا بتحبوا فرحكم وبسطكم ساعدونا. Help. Just help us, please, 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 please. والنداء المجروح غاب مع الأفق وغابت مزاعم ووعوف والشعارات كلها سقطت في الأرض وغابت no one has explained how you conduct a ceasefire with a group of terrorists. The safety of civilians, uh, that all should be concerned about protecting innocent civilian life, about protecting civilian infrastructure. The is that he doesn't want human life destroyed. Now you may consider that insignificant and is one of the horrible side effects that civilians do get injured and killed and that is one of the lamentable things. The simple answer is he thinks murder's wrong. We care deeply about uh, the loss of life and I'm troubled by the destruction that has taken place in Lebanon. What you're watching is American policy aiming to address the root cause and aiming to strengthen Lebanese democracy so that we can have peace. They destroyed innocent people and they didn't destroy 1% of the capacity of Hezbollah. This is not helpful at all. This is something that is creating in the Arab world Further uh, uh, disenchantment with the United States. I think this is not helpful at all to continuously supply Israel with further weapons and further, uh, 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 let's say, machinery of war.
After their base was shelled 14 times, a bomb from an Israeli warplane finished the job. Soldiers from China, from Finland, Austria and Canada. Three of their bodies were carried into the hospital at Majayun by their surviving colleagues earlier today. Our position yesterday came under sustained fire throughout the day and our last radio contact was at 19.15 hours when a very calm, very professional officer reported that the position was coming under direct fire. Now at the time they were located in the shelter, they have a radio in the shelter and they transmitted that. When we carried out our routine radio check at 19.30 hours, there was no reply. We then initiated a rescue operation. Unifil very bravely, men from Inbat went under fire to the position and found a destruction in the position. They'd been watching the blue line from their post at Kaim, watching the fire that would eventually kill them, doing their UN mandated jobs, just observing. Despite international outrage, there was no pause in the relentless Israeli onslaught today. There was a sense of panic among villagers who'd fled their homes to the south of Tyre. Israeli forces had told them through a megaphone they must leave before their villages were bombed. From the borders they told us, they told us on the microphone, leave your villages uh, in a very, very hurry, leave your villages quickly and go because we are going to uh, hit it by uh, the airplanes and okay now we, uh, everybody uh, put a little, some things in a bag and uh, began to leave. Began to leave. Many people are still there. They don't have cars to come here. They walk. Uh, they left their villages walking on their bare feet. Yeah. And what was the situation? Were people very afraid? Yeah. Afraid. <laughs> The famous Ramlet El Baida, literally white sands, is now wrecked by an oil slick like much of the Lebanese coast. 12,000 tons were spilled when Israel bombed the oil tanks of a power plant down the coast in Gia. but two Red Cross ambulances hit by Israeli fire in southern Lebanon overnight. Two of the medics were injured and three who were inside. This now feels like a war with no rules. Recovering today in hospital, friends and colleagues visited the injured medics. They've been close to fire before, but this time they say their ambulance was deliberately targeted. The two ambulances we are using the blue light uh, we are using the big light for the car, we are using the light inside the car, and we have our flag, the Red Cross flag, and there is light in this flag, which is there is no way for anyone to say we are not seen 100%. Upstairs, in a much more critical condition, the father and son who'd been passengers in the ambulance. 14-year-old Mohammed Fawaz was accompanying his injured grandmother. Now he has severe abdominal injuries, a punctured chest, and he's lost part of his foot. 
Now they've hit a Red Cross ambulance. Nothing feels sacrosanct here in Tyre. This Israeli operation seems to know no bounds. The hospital itself here is now crammed with civilians who've been hit in their cars and inside their own houses. The bombing campaign is continuing. The hospital itself has had a very close shave. You might be able to see less than 100 metres away, the building next door was hit last week. And the people of Tyre believe that around about here marks the edge of the safety zone. Thus far, no bombs have fallen inside the town centre itself, but day by day, they come closer and closer. This besieged city, though, today became a place of refuge for hundreds of people fleeing the violence. They arrived from all over the south, braving the threat of Israeli missiles and bombs to gather for evacuation by ferry to Cyprus. Sean Liffey was among them. He retired here some years ago. Diplomacy in this incident will not succeed until Mr. Bush tells the Israelis to stop. In my opinion, it's as simple as that. They've been given the green light to do what they're doing, and they will carry on until when they tell Mr. Bush we've done what we want to do, then there'll be a, a ceasefire, and then diplomacy will take its course. What do you think southern Lebanon will look like if they're allowed to persist until they've done what they need to do? Berlin after World War II, probably. The horror and sadness of the past week was apparent everywhere at Tyre Port, but nowhere more than on the face of the Saror family. Their car was hit by an Israeli missile yesterday as they tried to flee north. The father was killed. The mother left today with her four injured and traumatized That is the remainder. That's all what I have from my house. Say to Mr. Bush, that is a terrorist. I am the terrorist. I'm a doctor, medicine doctor. I'm a terrorist. At the government hospital in Tyre, they were loading the dead into a refrigerated lorry. There isn't much dignity here. This woman saw a neighbour blown up. There's nothing left of her, she cried. Refugees camp out in school buildings. This is Abla Mahana. Beyond the Roman ruins, she can see warships, sent here by France to evacuate foreigners. Don't tell me anybody feels our tragedy. Where are the Arab countries? Where is the rest of the world? What do they want? To make us like Iraq? We saw people slaughtered. We saw children torn into pieces. It's horrible to describe. One really has to live it. It's the first time I've seen war with my own eyes. I'm happy to be here, but I'm sad. I'm leaving the people dying and starving. And I hope from the whole world, appeal to them just to do something for Lebanon and the children. This is the price of war. It cost Huweda Al Khaled, eight years old, her eye, a dead father, and two dead brothers. Zakaria Al Medin, 18, who just passed his exams for college, also lost his father and two brothers. In the next room at Beirut University Hospital, Ahmed Halil Ali, who paid with his legs. His wife, son, and three daughters are one floor down, all wounded. Both of Ikram Ibrahim's little daughters have been wounded. Three-year-old Aya Ali lost a thumb, while one-year-old Ola has shrapnel wounds. And in the next room, eight-year-old Huida Khaled lost one eye and has poor sight in the second. She has yet to be told that both her parents are dead. The doctor looking after them spent years working in London. The world should, should see what's, uh, what, what, what's happening uh, to our children, to our uh, elderly, to our uh, uh, geriatric age, age group as well. You know? so, so of, uh, uh, the, the wound injury is uh, treatable, but the, but the psychic injury is, is what, what, what you, you can listen to what, what's happening to somebody who's having pain uh, out of the shrapnel. You know, to, 
to face this eight, eight years old, to face life with, with one, one eye, is, is really difficult. Lebanon's investigating reports from doctors that Israel's used chemical weapons during its bombardment of the country. Strangely blackened bodies have been showing up at hospitals in the south. Israel's denied using anything other than conventional weapons. Heart surgeon Dr. Bashir Mohammed Sham. These weapons contain toxics, which we discovered on a number of bodies we received here. There are eight bodies from a missile strike. The bodies are black, but they're not burnt. Their hair is still there, not burnt. If this was phosphorus or other chemicals that burn, then they would have been in flames. Pressure group Human Rights Watch has accused the Israeli army of using cluster bombs in built-up areas of the south. Israel denies it's contravened international law. These ambulance drivers and the civilians they were helping were fired at by an Israeli missile. An eight-year-old boy, badly wounded by shrapnel. His grandmother hit too, and his father, who later had a leg amputated. The UN has already warned that what is happening to civilians may be a violation of international law. We went to the room where 13-year-old Zainab Haydar was recovering from an Israeli airstrike which killed her grandmother. And the, uh, they bombed two bombs. In the first one, my mother was... Uh, um, they hit my mother. And the second one, uh, it hit uh, the leg of my grandmother and she died. The dead woman's husband was distraught. There was another explosion there. We just heard, this will give you an example of what people are living with. As I was speaking uh, to this grandfather, there was an explosion in the hills. And that's the kind of terror which isn't going away, which they live with hour by hour every day. Home, wife and hope, all lost. In Tibnin, only five miles from Israel, hundreds of frightened faces huddled inside a hospital. It's virtually standing room only. Many came here in the middle of the night when fierce fighting broke out in their hometown of Bint Jebel. This building affords only scant protection, but it's the best these families have. Inside, there's grief and there's anger. <laughs> There's danger as well as Israel drops its bombs on the doorstep. This is what terror looks like. 150 people crowded into a darkened basement. Look, look, she says. Look at what's happening to us. Above ground, Miara Mansour is counting what she has left. My, ba my baby, his name is Hussein. He's died. And my husband. And my husband, he's died. Then I have this boy and two girls. Just this boy and two girls for me now. My. She says many of the dead lie buried in the rubble in her village. Many, many. Still there. Eh, they still, and the ambulance want to go there, but the, the Israel, hmm. huh? Uh, uh, yes. Cut, cut the, 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 street. Cut the street. You know, that's right. You know, and today, two big bombs from uh, Israel beside the hospital here. You know that? Now we want you to help us. We want all of the body, all of the country, all of the, 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 world, the, world, the world, all of the, the world to help us. Help, just help us. Please, 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 please. This was a canal in a refugee camp called Kasmia. Children were splashing in the water when an F-16 bomb fell. All that's left now a crater four meters deep.
Murphy. What's there? What? What's there? Is Hezbollah here? It was small children. Is Hezbollah here? This incident has caused terrible distress and anger here. Other villages have been virtually erased from the map down here. In one today, 17 died in an airstrike. The mayor described it as a massacre. Jabal Amal Hospital in Tyre has been taking wounded from across the disaster zone that is southern Lebanon today. She has uh, a large burns in her body and she has no a little chance to survive. Really? Yeah. She's losing a lot of fluids. Really? Yeah. In the basement, they're cowering from the bombs, taking refuge. They're here because they think the hospital is safer, but even Jabal Amal Hospital's been bombed. The United Nations said today they're considering evacuating this town. Parts of the capital have been virtually leveled. Dahiya, a Shia Muslim district, Beirut's ground zero. Ten o'clock this morning and three shells fired from an Israeli gunboat slam into a residential neighborhood in Christian East Beirut, spared until now. Is the value of human life in Lebanon less than anywhere else, the Prime Minister asked. We choose life, he said. We refuse to die. But in southern Lebanon, they're dying at such an alarming rate. The United Nations has questioned whether war crimes might have been committed here. The refrigerated truck parked at the back of Jabal Amal Hospital in Tyre now holds the bodies of more than 100 civilians. So relentless has Israel's onslaught been, they've had no chance to bury them. A man has documented horrors with the camera on his mobile phone. It was all he had to hand as he was forced to flee his village. He needed the world to witness what had happened. They're killing everyone. Kids, women, old people. They're not even getting, they're not even killing, not even one single man. I mean, one terrorist, if there is a terrorist. But they're only killing kids, women, and old people. وقف الطفل وحده والليالي ورصاص من حوله وجنود وقف الطفل والحجارة أكوام وعيناه عزمة مصمود وقف الطفل وحده It's come to this, a massacre of children. No miracles were possible in Kana today. No one was pulled alive from the rubble. Just the horrible sight of the very young on stretchers. One after another, their lifeless bodies carried into the light. With the three-story building on the verge of collapse, rescue workers tried to uncover the entombed bodies. As many as 60 people had been hiding in the basement of this unfinished building for 16 days, most of them women and children. They'd moved from house to house trying to find shelter. But in the early hours of Sunday morning, a thousand-pound bomb found them. There was no warning. All we heard was the blast and the shaking of the earth. And, and was there, why were the people sheltering here? Why hadn't they gone up to, to Tyre or escaped the village altogether? They blocked the road many days ago and it wasn't easy for people to escape. Nor was it easy today for ambulances to reach the bomb site, laboriously picking their way through the wreckage of the town. Zainab Ahmed Shahoub is one of the few people they brought back alive from Kana. She and her sister are both in shock, praying for the blood of their martyred family, praying for the war to stop. Zainab told me as best she could remember what happened last night. 
Every night someone stands watch, and when they see a helicopter, we turn off the candles. So I was sitting with my cousin, and we heard a helicopter coming in close. My cousin told me, don't be afraid, it's probably nothing. I asked him, would they hit a house with people hiding in it? And he said, don't worry. We were listening to the radio, then I fell asleep just after midnight. I woke up with my mouth full of dirt and sand and rubble all over us, and all I could hear were screams. On her fingers she counts who she and her sister have lost. Mahmoud Hashem, Zafar Hussein, Abbas and Radia, who is only 10 months old. In their immediate family, their mother, their father, Ali Hashub, who was only a boy, and Yusuf, their beloved younger brother. My little brother. Yusuf, my love, my lovely little brother. It's impossible to measure the pain, the loss this terrible event has caused. Israel says this is a war of pinpoint accuracy. But what people here want to know then is how do they explain an airstrike on a civilian building killing women and children, two families sheltering in the basement here in this mixed Christian and Shia Muslim town. It's clear Kana has been hit time and time again over the past weeks. Israel accuses Hezbollah of using the village as a launching pad for its rockets. But when we meet another survivor, Rabat Yusuf, she denies any rockets were launched nearby. We don't have rockets in our homes. Hezbollah don't launch rockets amongst our houses or from our neighborhood. They fire them from the valleys, the mountains and the hills. Her four-and-a-half-year-old son, Hassan, is the only child to survive the bombing. His six-year-old sister died. Over 30 children in body bags now over there in the other building. Who are the terrorists, us or them? Let the United Nations know what terrorism is. There's been a massacre in Kana before, and what did they do then? Nothing. Nothing has changed. Why are you filming us if you can't do anything about it? In the corridor outside, hospital staff share her anger. I think now we are the witnesses that the world is transferring uh, from humans to robots, not more. I don't uh, hear, I don't see any, any feelings, any... Uh, I don't know how to explain English. Uh, if uh, somebody has uh, such deserter, uh, disaster, I think the world must say his word. Stop it, at least. Thank you very much. Thank you. This day has unearthed the worst of war. The question now is whether these small lives matter enough for anyone to stop it.